everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, I was thinking about frugal people and homesteaders. I think we're the same, to be honest. Let me turn this a little bit. There we go. I felt like I was crooked again. Okay, what I wanted to talk about, and I was thinking about frugal people, um, were people that don't take expensive vacations. I don't take an expensive vacation. At least um, when you have kids, you don't take an expensive vacation. Maybe when you get old and think you're going to die, you might take an expensive vacation. <laughs> I'm not dying, so no expensive vacations here. Um, when we were, when, when our kids were younger, the only type of vacation we would take would be camping and it and it's funny because camping used to be really really inexpensive we could go to the state park now I'm gonna go back into the 80s you could go to the state park for fourteen dollars a night which was really a good deal because they didn't ask how many adults how many children because we had probably six kids with us and two adults because of the foster children. We had extra children. <clears throat> well, we did have electric with that. And we had electric, yeah. And yet we never had the water. We always well, filled our tank. We had access to, access the, water. to the water, but we but didn't stay connected. So, but now it costs a lot. And every time you go to a park, they'll say it's for two adults, two children, and anything extra, you pay extra. Somebody and then if you have pets, adults? you had to pay more for the pets. Whereas before, you didn't have to do that even. So camping used to be a really inexpensive way to go. And so that's how the few frugal people would go. And now we take the motorcycle a lot of times because it's just Jim and I. So we'll take the motorcycle and we'll go on a, a bike trip. But we don't make reservations most of the time. We drive until we don't feel like driving anymore. And then we look for a, a really inexpensive place to stay. And we usually can find something. Okay, another thing that frugal people do is um, we re research prices. We like to know what it's going to cost. We want to we want to try and get the best deal possible out there. So we will um, check to see what it costs at this store, what it costs at that store. Now that the internet is there, we don't have to run around from store to store. You can actually just go online and kind of scope it out and see what's which one is cheaper and then you don't buy right away you might think about it do I really need it or do I really want it or what is the reason that we're even looking for it so we will um, that's what something that a frugal person does and we don't try to keep up with the Joneses now if the Joneses are your neighbors I don't have any Jones neighbor but I did go to school with a kid named with the last name of Jones but um they, if they buy a new car, I don't care if I have a new car or old car, as long as that car gets me somewhere. Or if they buy a new bike, I don't need a new bike or, or anything that they have. If they took a real expensive vacation, they went to Europe, say they went to Europe. I don't care to go to Europe. I'd like to see the United States before I travel anywhere else. But I don't need to do what they're doing. And it, and if, say, they went to a, I went to this four-star restaurant, and it was really good, and the food was delicious, and I paid $200 per meal. I don't need to do that. I'm happy with going to the little um, fam, mom, and mom and pop restaurants, yeah, the family restaurant, family, family restaurant. I, I don't need to have that expensive meal. I think I would die. I had a glass of wine and it was eight dollars. Eight dollars? I could buy a whole bottle of wine for eight dollars or cheaper. <laughs> so that's what the frugal mind would be doing. It would be thinking, oh my goodness, you spent all that money on what? For one night and for one dinner? Mm -mm, that could feed a whole family for a lot longer. Okay, and they never have a credit card balance, which is true. I didn't even have a credit card for years and years and years. In fact, when I went to the bank, because she said that we shouldn't use our debit card when we traveled, so she said we should get a credit card. But she said, but don't be surprised if they deny you. And the reason that was for that is we didn't have any credit. We had never built up credit. And so now that we do have a credit card that I... 
that they they actually approved us but it was for a very small amount which was fine because I really didn't need it other than when we go on a vacation and when we go on a vacation our vacations are very cheap mostly it was gas and it was just used for gas and maybe the hotel if we were on the bike or if we were going to the campground we would use it for the campground um, but we don't we don't um, not pay the full bill when the full bill comes in it's paid so they know so I don't even know if I still have credit or not if you pay your bill in full every time so I never have a balance on that credit card and I don't finance a car whenever we've bought a vehicle we always pretend that we're making car payments and we put that money aside and so when it comes time to buy another car you have the money already because you've already made pretend car payments to yourself and this way you can afford to get something a little better than what you thought you were going to get and because you've already you've already put the money away and I don't waste food how many times my daughter has come here now I have a daughter that is real persnickety real oh gosh she I was eating pickles the other day the pickles when I it was in a glass jar and I had opened them and it popped this they were sealed they were sealed very well and I was eating them and she was eating them and then she decided to look at the date and she goes oh these were supposed to have been eaten last year and I says they still taste good they're nothing wrong with them they were sealed well she didn't have any more because of the date that was on the jar so some people go by those dates I don't go by those dates I go by flavor if it tastes funny then it's funny and I don't throw it out, throw it out. If it's edible for the chickens, the chickens got it. If it's not edible for them, then it goes onto the compost pile. But you don't waste food. You have, um, you make sure that it gets used up. Recycled. Recycled or somehow. Around. If it's not for the chickens, it's for the compost or if it's, well, okay. And um, <clears throat> we buy in bulk. If it's on sale, we'll buy a bunch of them. The only thing you don't buy in bulk, and don't ever do this, because my dad did it once, he bought salad dressing, because it was a great buy. Well, salad dressing will go rancid, I hate to tell you. Because my, and my mother, oh gosh, they're so sad, because my dad worked all day, and then he went to work, and she, she tried to tell him not to do that, and he didn't listen, and he kept doing it. And so one time she opened a jar, a brand new jar, of the salad dressing and the salad dressing wasn't the best so she made him a sandwich anyways poor guy so he got no lunch he just had his fruit and his his fruit and his coffee and he might have had some cookies or something so he didn't he didn't get it so but that's one thing he didn't buy anymore in bulk but he did buy toilet paper in bulk I remember him bringing home this great big huge box and it had a hundred rolls of toilet paper in it. Can you imagine? A hundred rolls? And we had the, we put as much as we could into the bathroom cupboard. There was a cupboard that we had that we would put them in there and then the rest of them went to the basement. It was a box that my sisters and I, we could get inside totally and disappear. It was that big. Um... We try not to pay full price. That what I already did. We wait for a sale. Let's see. We don't spend just for the fun of it. I think I kind of hit on that. We're not emotional spenders. We we don't spend if you're just if you're happy. You don't spend if you're sad. You don't spend if you're depressed. We don't. I just don't spend. And that could be real easy because people that use the internet to buy a lot of things that could be a very dangerous situation I don't buy anything on the internet I bought one thing once from eBay I read the whole thing wrong and I ended I here I'm thinking I'm getting an American Girl doll and I'm thinking wow that's pretty cheap for an American Girl doll well it wasn't an American Girl doll it was American Girl doll outfit <laughs> good thing it fit one of my grandkids but that it was cute it was a cute outfit but it did but so I don't buy anything online I I leave that to Jim if he's gonna buy anything online um and always a frugal person will always prepare for a rainy day you know they always say that you could have a you know you may have a good job right now but prepare for that day that maybe that job will disappear you should always have a nest egg. And so that's something that we always did. When I was younger, my mother used to have us save half 
of everything that we made. Like when we worked out in the berry field and she'd pay us five cents a quart, whatever we made, that half of that money always went into our savings account and the other half we could do what we wanted with, but chances are we put that in the savings account too. Um, let's see. And we, frugal people, try to repair rather than go out and buy brand new. Like if something breaks, we're tearing it apart and we're trying to see what's wrong with it. If we can fix it, we'll fix it. I even do that with the toys. When I was working at the school, they would say, this doesn't work. And I would get my screwdriver out and I would take it apart. And I'd be looking at it and see whether I could fix it or put the put something, make it work again. Chances are I get it to work again. So even this, at the school, I was very frugal and they were very quick to throw stuff out. It was sad, it was so sad. Um, I always look at containers as reusable. There's got to be another purpose for them. Like if you're looking for a box, I might look around the house to see what I have rather than go to the container store to buy something that would work, I'm sure would work. But I try to find something that's in the house. Or even if I buy something that comes in a real pretty decorative kind of container and, and it's gone, I might save the container because I'm thinking Gee, that looks like it could be a vase or something. That's why I have a lot of stuff in my house. <laughs> I save too many things. Let's see. And when you're going to build something, we look around to see what we have on hand before we go to the store to buy. If, if we're built, like when we built our chicken house, we um, had lumber up in the barn and we used the lumber that we had. And we had steel that was from another project for the roof and so we used that. The chicken wire we had, that was because my old barn that fell down, there was chicken wire in it so we used a lot of that. But we did have to buy some new chicken wire and hard wire, hard, hardware hardware cloth. cloth we had to buy. And, when, and the screening, and for the wind thing for a long time I was using, I had these great big huge banners that came from McDonald's that they were gonna throw out and they were, I used them on a float and then I used them to wrap around the chicken house and then after a while Jim bought me that cloth that's for it blocks the wind and rain and snow and stuff from the chicken house but yet lets the air in and the light in and and it's breathable so that's I guess my oh and Bob about the junkyard <laughs> he mentioned one time that he didn't think that we'd like a junkyard next to our house. Well, it's true. I don't want a junkyard next to my house. And the reason I don't want the junkyard is because it leaves too many spots for little critters to hide. And it could be a problem that way. But we do visit junkyards. When we need a part for something, the first place we go is to a junkyard because we can buy it for a whole lot less and Jim can put it in to whatever it is we're looking to put it in. And so, as far as a junkyard next door, true. I don't want one. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little frugal. And a lot of the stuff I said, I'm sure homesteaders do uh, talk. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.